Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and today we're going to take a look at a very cost effective keyboard and mouse combo from our friends over at Habit. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a very budget conscious mechanical keyboard and mouse set from the people over at Habit. Now, this was sent to me free of charge for review purposes. So let's uh, take a look at the box, take a look at the keyboard and mouse, see what it offers and see if it's actually worth the money. Now, money wise, at the moment, this is available actually as a lightning deal on Amazon.co.uk for around about £32, which I think is really great value for money for a keyboard or mouse, especially being a mechanical one. It's not very often we see a mechanical keyboard in this kind of price point, so I figured it'd be well worth a look. Now, the original retail price is somewhere around about the £40 mark, so obviously do uh, look out for the bargains where you can. I will put some links for both Amazon and also have its site so you can check out for yourself. And they do an absolute ton of different keyboards, mices, headsets, Bluetooth stuff, you name it, they do pretty much everything, so definitely check out their site. But moving on to what we've got in hand. So this is a keyboard and mouse set, and as you can see, the packaging is actually uh, pretty minimalist, which is good because essentially we're more concentrating on the goods inside. But just so we can see, so on the side here, we've got the model number and some of the details of what's inside. Now this one is a little bit confusing some of their kind of naming strategies. So this is actually the KB393L set, but because it is with the UK layout, there's a slightly different part number. So mine's the KB432L combo. Obviously, depending on where you are, where you live, etc., there is a specific version for your particular region. So do bear that in mind. Although if you're after just a generic US style keyboard, those generally tend to be the cheapest ones available. So let's take it out and see what we actually get. So packaging wise, uh, not a great deal here. So we've got our Habit user manual and then there is a QR code on the back to tell you uh, more detail on your mobile phone. Also it goes into keyboard specifications, all the different keystrokes, etc., and information about the mouse. So that's all well and good. We'll take a look at that a little bit later, possibly. Let's take a look at the keyboard itself. Now again, the packaging here is rather minimalistic, and all we get essentially is the mouse, which is enclosed in there. We get the keyboard itself. No wrist rest with this one. There is an option for a version with a wrist rest. Again, check out their site for more details on that. You do get a keycap puller included, which is nice. And we do get a really nice braided cable. Now on the keyboard, the cable itself is 1.5 meters and fully braided. On the mouse is 1.8 meters, so a little bit longer, which actually is useful if your PC is maybe on one side and you're a left-handed person or whatever the case may be, but it's nice to see a slightly longer cable on the mouse, so 1.8 meters on the mouse. So let's actually start with the mouse itself. So as you can see, the mouse itself is a uh, rather large style mouse and fits in the hand really nicely, very comfortable. You've got some indentations on the side there and a little bit of artwork, which is quite nice to break it up from being just a boring plastic thing. You've also got on the side, you've got your back and forward buttons or whatever you choose to program them as in your Windows setup. This will work with pretty much most Windows versions, it's completely plug and play, no drivers to install, so just plug it in and you're up and running. There's no RGB software to worry about, all the RGB is controlled by buttons on the actual devices. On the mouse itself, there is two buttons, so you've got a DPI selection button. There's six different DPI settings, ranging from around about 300 up to 4,800 and kind of increments there through. Again, you can check it out on their site. There is also the RGB button, so just press that and you can cycle through the RGB settings. On the top here, you've got this nice clicky wheel mouse and actually it's got quite nice indentations on there. Quite good for flicking as well, so it does roll a little bit as well. So it's not one of those which is quite hard to move, so for certain games where you're choosing weapons, etc., really good. Or if you're just blasting through web pages, absolutely fine. RGB wise, you've got an RGB logo on the back, the Habit logo, and also you've got LED which runs around the exterior of the unit. So yeah, pretty nice and nice clicky buttons as well. Nice to see. We'll plug that in in a minute and see what it actually looks like. But let's take a look at the keyboard. Already, you can tell this is super clicky. Now this actually comes with a kind of uh, a Cherry MX Blue clone switch. Uh, they haven't actually said what manufacturer they are, which is a little bit disappointing, but again, essentially for this kind of price point, as long as it's mechanical, that's all we're really worried about. Now if we take off one of the keycaps, could use a puller, but I'll use my fingers. And as you can see, you've got the nice mechanical blue switch in there, which actually has got quite a nice, quite a nice bump to it. And yeah, there's definitely a notch there. So nice switches, we like that a lot. The caps themselves are double shot. So you've got plastic inserts, 
and then you've got the black surroundings, so that's really nice. And overall, the keyboard itself has got a really nice weight to it. It's got a metal top deck, plastic base, so nice bit of weight to it. Not overly heavy, uh, not lightweight, so it's going to fly around everywhere, but yeah, overall, it's a very nice setup. As you can see, this is the full size setup, so it's not a 10 keyless, so you've got all your number pad, all the extra buttons there. There's no function keys as such on here. They are controlled with the function key, so you press and hold the function key, which is over this side, and then you can go through the various settings and choose things like Internet Explorer, fast forward, rewind music, all that kind of stuff. All the usual things you expect to see on a keyboard, and they're all laid out very clearly on that top deck. Lighting-wise, it's all controlled again from the keyboard itself. So you've got the buttons here, which have got your brightness settings and different types of settings for the RGB. And at the bottom, the arrow keys, you've got things for adjusting brightness and also the speed of the RGB. Now this is actually a rainbow keyboard. It's not technically an RGB keyboard, or it's not got perlit keys, so there is sections of backlighting, but it is a rather nice rainbow effect. And again, this is a relatively budget offering, so you can't expect too much. Moving around onto the bottom, so we've got two rubber pads at the bottom to help stabilize it on the desk. Unfortunately, at the back, there's no rubber pads, uh, either on the keyboard itself or actually on the adjustable feet which is a little bit disappointing, although most people these days do tend to use a large size mouse mat, so have your keyboard and mouse on a mat, so that's gonna keep it stable anyway. But on some surfaces, such as like this IKEA desk, which a lot of us tend to have, there is a little bit of movement there, so don't expect it to be rooted solidly to your desk. Again, a slight downside, but not really a deal breaker, and actually very comfortable and very clicky. So if you're working in an environment where there's a lot of people around you or it's in a family room, maybe a little bit on the clicky side for some. But I quite like it. It's nice and responsive, nice and springy, and actually quite a yeah, quite a nice feel to it. I'm not too sure exactly what these switches are, like I said. I don't think they're Otamu type switches. I think they're something completely custom, but they do feel very nice. Anyway, let's plug it in and see what the RGB is like. So as you can see, this is completely driverless, so you just plug it in and you're up and running. Off to the races, so to speak. And as you can see, you've got that really nice RGB effect on the keyboard. So this section's red, this section's yellow, green, blue, then going into purple on the outside. And again, you can control all of the RGB from the buttons on the keyboard itself. So let's press the function button and you can turn the keyboard lighting off altogether if you wanted to. So that's on button six, button three, you've got various sections. Better turn it back on first. So into flow version three, you've got that kind of sine wave effect. Into two, you've got the reactive effect. Hopefully you guys can uh, see that pretty well on the camera. On the first section, again, just this is your standard RGB. This is with the keyboard illuminated all the time. Yeah, quite nice. And um, yeah, various features on there. You can cycle through a couple of times on some of them and then you get just the keys light up on their own, which again, hopefully you can see pretty well. But overall, quite a nice keyboard. You've got the Windows key, which you can lock out as well. And I'll turn the lights off again, so. Yeah, various flow types there. Looks, looks pretty nice. Not very high, so quite a low profile keyboard as such. And the lighting comes through quite nicely on those clear keys. Again, you've got the the blue switches in there, so yeah, it looks really nice. And actually to type on, absolutely fine. Although my typing is not particularly accurate. One thing I did this, just notice actually, spinning the keyboard around, you have actually got options on there, so there's some presets as well for the lighting for the keyboard. So you've got RTS for real-time strategy, and you've also got FPS. So if you press the function key and RTS, then it lights up the keys which are most likely used in those kinds of games. Also, if you do that again, press the button and press FPS, then it lights up your arrow keys, which normally for games, and also your ASDW. Yeah, pretty decent overall. I quite like this. It's a nice, cheap and cheerful setup. So let's try the mouse. Again, with the mouse, no drivers or anything required, just plug it in and you're up and running. And for me personally, I kind of like this, this kind of size mouse. It works really well for me. It's very, very similar to one of the Rio Toro Aurox mice, uh, which is slightly larger. Not a massive amount of weight to it, around about 80 grams, I would say, thereabouts. There's no additional weighting or anything that you can uh, add to it to make it heavier or lighter. 
On the bottom, you've got the rubber pads to help slide around the desk. Nice to see, it isn't LED, it's a uh, laser mouse, so that's good for tracking on a surface. And actually saying that on the, looking on my laptop, it does track around very nicely. And you can, of course, you can adjust the DPI by pressing the DPI button, and you can select your various levels of DPI. And yeah, that is quite accelerated. On the lowest setting, so if you're into your kind of creativity tasks, or maybe you're using Photoshop, that kind of thing, on the lowest setting, actually, it does seem particularly accurate, even though there isn't a mouse pad, it's just on this IKEA cheap desk. So yeah, overall, very good. If you want to change the RGB functions on here, you can press the RGB button and it cycles through various options. There's about six or seven options on here. And for those of you that are basically not liking RGB, but you want a nice keyboard and mouse, you can turn off the RGB on the mouse. And also you can turn off the RGB on the keyboard and pretty much have it very, very neutral. The only lights really are the Windows key light, which stays on when it's either locked or locked on. Also, you've got your number lock, caps lock buttons there, which illuminate in red. So yeah, overall, pretty happy with this. Again, for the price point, especially if you get it as a lightning deal on Amazon, for £30, I don't think you can have any complaints whatsoever. When you get a bit closer to the recommended retail price, which is around about the £40 mark, then again, there are other options available. Although saying that, the Cooler Master Master Keys light is in a similar price point, but doesn't have mechanical keys. That is all membrane based. So you do get the mechanical switches for the money, which, yeah, again, I don't think you can go too far wrong. So there we go, there has been a quick look at the Havit keyboard and mouse set. Again, links will be in the video description if you want to check out for yourself. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.